We are looking at several types of lubrication systems for machine tool. It's very important to maintain and upkeep these pumps as they are critical to the longevity uh, and, the, and the success and runtime of your machine. There are several types that can be found on various different places within the machine. There are grease pumps, typically used for ways or ball screws. There are single line resistance oil pumps, and there are positive displacement oil pumps. All of these serve a purpose within the machine, and some are better at things than others. But today we're gonna to talk about how we can make sure that these are properly sized and fit the application uh, for replacement or a new application. One common system that, that we see uh, are grease systems. There are several types of grease systems. They can be manual or they can be automatic. Uh, there, there can also be different size systems as far as volume. So you have different cartridges. Um, typically, you know, within this industry, you're gonna see a 200 milliliter, a 400 milliliter, which is a taller, skinnier, and a 700 milliliter. This, for example, this size would be a 700 milliliter system. Grease, um, one of the important things about grease is you don't typically want to mix types of grease. So it's important to know what grease you've been using in the machine and if what you're using or plan on using now is compatible with that. If not, that system really needs to be cleaned out and flushed to get back to, uh, to start a new grease or a new system. A lot of the things that we look for when we're specking a grease system or replacing an existing model are just that. One, you want to start out with your volume. How much do you need? How often do you want to be replacing this cartridge? Two, you want to look at your pressure. So grease systems are typically higher pressure than oil because uh, grease is harder to pump. So you'll have anywhere from five to maybe even eight MPA. And the rest of the components in that system need to correspond with that. So you're typically talking copper or steel lines, your manifold blocks, your metering units all need to be capable of that pressure. Third thing we'll look for is the voltage of your pump. There are lots of combinations, you know, 100 volt, 200 volt, very common. Um, but it's important to know which. There are also brands that are dual voltage. So if you're using a dual voltage motor, uh, you need to, to know which it's using to be able to specify a new unit in some cases. Once you've got those things uh, established, you have uh, you've basically you know, completed the steps for what you need to know. Now, after that, there will be some accessories potentially a low level switch or a warning for when your grease is low. You may also have a pressure switch in, in the system uh, to, give you, to let you know that maybe your pump has malfunctioned or has not met pressure for the system. The, there are two primary oil types of oil systems on machine tool. You have your single line resistance models and this is your positive displacement system here. There are several uh, sizes, pressures, flow rates, etc., within these models. But the first thing you want to look at if you're looking to replace or install a new system is probably the volume that you'll require for that system. The standard size for this unit is a 1.8 liter reservoir. This one we're looking at here today is a three liter reservoir. They also make four liter, six liter, eight liter, all the way up. Typically your smaller reservoirs will be a plastic or a resin type material. Your larger will be a steel, uh, a metal tank, and we drop the pump on. So once you have your volume figured out or calculated, you can look at what pressure is required from the pump. 
This particular model is capable of about 215 PSI. That's pretty standard for these, anywhere from 100 to 200, depending on your system. And that, that, uh, this has a relief valve um, that caps out at about 215 PSI, so you won't go over pressure for your system. The third thing is your flow rate. How much will this pump discharge when it comes on? Um, right around uh, 90 to 110 milliliters is very common. There are pumps that go all the way up to 1,000 milliliters, and there's some that are less. But basically, you want to make sure that that corresponds with whatever you're replacing or that it's adequate for all of the points that you're trying to lubricate on the machine. Another important thing to notice on these models is your voltage. Uh, 100 volt and 200 volt are very common. Uh, some manufacturers make a dual voltage pump and motor, which, which is fine, but if you're replacing that with another brand that is not, you need to know which voltage in order to specify the pump. Oftentimes, when connecting these pumps, <clears throat> There will be a diagram that explains right either inside the cover or right here at the terminal strip that helps you determine where to connect and what your voltages are. You'll also see connections for some of your pump accessories like level switches or pressure switches. Those will be called out here and usually determining whether they're normally open or normally closed contacts. Your level switch, which this pump is equipped with, is usually a normally open switch, but can be changed by turning this over. And this model also is equipped with a pressure switch, which can be connected here to let you know when your pump has not reached the desirable pressure or has malfunctioned. So after those two accessories with the pump, as we work our way down the system, you'll typically go from from this pump to your uh, distribution block. This is called a junction block, distribution block, uh, manifold. These are all the same things. These usually hold your metering units, which is what this is here, or your valve. You could have one metering unit or you could have 10 in a single block or maybe even more. And you might have multiple manifolds within your system. So it's important to know and check check all of those. Now your uh, metering unit, these are common, common items that are often replaced. It's important to know your thread type on the manifold side and you also need to know your thread type on the line side. There's metric thread, um, there are several different ones. You want to make sure you're getting the correct one that's going to fit in your system. Also, these metering units are sized based on flow rate. So to determine what that flow rate is, there's generally a little mark right here on the body or on the side of this unit that indicates its discharge volume. Now these marks, the, the number doesn't necessarily indicate the volume, it's just an indication by the manufacturer to tell us what, what this is. It could be anywhere, uh, various different numbers, but a 0, 3 is typically different than a 3, which you see here. And not all manufacturers use the same mark to determine the same flow rate, so you want to pay attention to that as well. So metering units are unique. This is almost like there's a, there's a valve within this unit. And basically when the pump turns on and comes up to pressure, this will discharge. The pump has to go off for this to reset. So if you're not seeing a constant flow from this unit, that can be normal depending on the cycle of your pump and where you're at. Oftentimes these can plug or become corroded or malfunctioned, so it's a good thing to check, but it doesn't mean you'll have a constant flow of oil when these are functional. Your pump must come on, build pressure, this will discharge, and then the pump will shut off and this will reset.
Another type of oil system is a single line resistance type pump. Compared to a positive displacement pump, this pump will stay under continuous power all the time and contains a timer that tells it when to discharge based on the motor RPM. There are several ranges of times for this type of pump. It's important to know what your discharge interval is so you can select the right part number when determining which pump you need. This particular model, for example, has a six minute interval, but those intervals can range anywhere from three minutes, typically to 120 minutes, okay, depending on your application and which pump you select. So knowing when it's going to discharge is important. You also want to consider the volume that will need to be discharged. And you can, you can look and see this is a 1.8 liter reservoir, which is very common. They make a three liter, four, five, six, so on up the line. Typically your smaller reservoirs are resin or plastic. Your larger's will be steel. Your discharge pressure on single line resistance is usually lower than a positive displacement. You're looking at 0.3 MPA, maybe around 40 to 50 PSI for a discharge pressure. When this discharges, usually we'll go out to a manifold block with a metering unit. And now when the pump is running on this particular model, this metering unit will, should be discharging oil when the pump is running. If you find that it's not, you may have a bad metering unit or it's not getting a proper supply. These metering units are fairly universal, but it's important to know the thread type on the manifold side as well as your line side. There are several variations, metric, standard, it's different sizes, so you need to confirm that. This metering unit will only work in one direction, so you have to go from one one side to the other, it won't work in the opposite, and there's an arrow right here on the side of the metering unit that shows you which direction the oil needs to flow. This metering unit also has a mark, a number that indicates its flow rate or volume. That mark can be anything from a zero to a five on this particular series. Uh, some manufacturers you may see larger or smaller numbers, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the particular flow rate, but that number corresponds with a flow rate every time that the pump is turned on. All metering units may not be the same flow rate, so it's important to check each of those within the machine or the manifold to make sure you're getting the right size that corresponds with the necessary oil delivery. We've covered several oil and grease system options today. But if you're working with something that doesn't align or you still need help, don't be afraid to reach out and we'll do our best to find a solution.